Hey everybody, welcome back to reading the Book of Mormon, and we're in Alma chapter 17. Alright, the sons of Mosiah have the spirit of prophecy and of revelation. They go their several ways to declare the word to the Lamanites. Ammon goes to the land of Ishmael and becomes the servant of King Lamoni. King Lamoni. Ammon saves the king's flock and slays his enemies at the waters of Sebus. The waters of Sebus. And now it came to pass that as Alma was journeying from the land of Gideon southward, away to the land of Monti, behold, to his astonishment, he met with the sons of Mosiah, journeying toward the land of Zarahemla. Now these sons of Mosiah were with Alma at the time the angel first appeared unto him. Therefore Alma did rejoice exceedingly to see his brethren, and what added more to his joy, they were still his brethren in the Lord. Yea, and they had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth. They had waxed? They had waxed strong in the knowledge of the truth. For they were men of a sound understanding, and they had searched the scriptures diligently, that they might know the word of God. But this is not all, they had given themselves to much prayer and fasting, therefore they had the spirit of prophecy. So you get the spirit of prophecy <laughs> via praying a lot and fasting. Okay, and the spirit of revelation, and then they taught they taught with power and authority of God. That was a little bit of a word sandwich there, let's just repeat that. And the spirit of revelation, and when they taught they taught with the power and authority of God. Okay. And they had been teaching the word of God for the space of fourteen years among the Lamanites, having had much success in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth. Yea, by the power of their words, many were brought before the altar of God to call on his name and confess their sins before him. Now these are the circumstances which attend them in their journeyings. For they had many afflictions. They did suffer much both in body and in mind, such as hunger, thirst, and fatigue, and also much labor in the spirit. Now these were their journeyings, having taken leave of their father, Mosiah, in the first year of the judges, having refused the kingdom which their father was desirous to confer upon them. And also this was the minds of the people. Nevertheless, they departed out of the land of Zarahemla and took their swords and their spears and their bows and their arrows and their slings, and this they did that they might provide food for themselves while in the wilderness. Well, that's smart. And thus they departed into the wilderness with their numbers, which they had selected to go up to the land of Nephi, to preach the word of God unto the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they journeyed many days in the wilderness, and they fasted much and prayed much that the Lord would grant unto them a portion of the Spirit to go with them, and abide with them, that they might be an instrument in the hands of God to bring, if it were possible, their brethren, the Lamanites, to the knowledge of truth, to the knowledge of the baseness of traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. Notice how it's like the base, the knowledge of baseness of the traditions of their fathers, which were not correct. And it came to pass that the Lord did visit them with his spirit, and said unto them, Be comforted. And they were comforted. And the Lord said unto them also, Go forth among the Lamanites, thy brethren, and establish my word. Yet ye shall be patient in long suffering and afflictions that ye may show forth good examples unto them in me, and I will make an instrument of thee in my hands unto the salvation of many souls. And it came to pass that the hearts of the sons of Mosiah and also those who were with them took courage to go forth unto the Lamanites to declare unto them the word of God. And it came to pass that when they had arrived in the borders of the land of the Lamanites, that they separated themselves and departed one from another, trusting in the Lord that they should meet again at the close of their harvest. For they supposed that the great was taken the work which they had undertaken. And assuredly it was great, for they had undertaken to preach the word of God to a wild and hardened 
and a ferocious people, a people who delighted in murdering the Nephites and robbing and plundering them, and their hearts were set upon riches or upon gold and silver and precious stones. Yet they sought to obtain these things by murdering and plundering, that they might not labor for them with their own hands, not like a bunch of pirates. Thus they were a very indolent people, many of whom did worship idols, and the curse of God had fallen upon them because of the traditions of their fathers. Notwithstanding the promises of the Lord were extended unto them on the conditions of repentance. Therefore, this was the cause for which the sons of Mosiah had undertaken the work, and perhaps they might bring them unto repentance, that perhaps they might bring them to know of the plan of redemption. The plan of redemption. Therefore they separated themselves one from another, and went forth among them, every man alone, according to the word and power of God which was given unto him. Now Ammon being the chief among them, and rather he did administer unto them, and he departed from them after having blessed them according to their several stations, having imparted the word of God unto them, or administered unto them before his departure. And thus they took their several journeys throughout the land, and Ammon went to the land of Ishmael, and land being called after the sons of Ishmael, who also became Lamanites. And as Ammon entered the land of Ishmael, the Lamanites took him and bound him, as was their custom to bind all the Nephites who fell into their hands, and carry them before the king, and thus it was left to the pleasure of the king to slay them, or to retain them in captivity, or to cast them into prison, or to cast them out of his land, according to his will and pleasure. Talk about border security, wow. And thus Ammon was carried before the king, who was over the land of Ishmael. And his name was Lamoni, and he was a descendant of Ishmael. Hmm. Lamoni. And the king inquired of Ammon if it were his desire to dwell in the land among the Lamanites, or among his people. And Ammon said unto him, Yea, I desire to dwell among this people for a time, yea, and perhaps until the day I die. And it came to pass that King Lamoni was much pleased with Ammon, and caused that his band should be loosed, and he would that Ammon should take one of his daughters to wife. Oh, uh, that's a marriage proposal, right? I just had you bound up. Uh, I like your response. Marry one of my daughters. <laughs> but Ammon said unto him, Nay, but I will be thy servant. Therefore Ammon became a servant to King Lamoni, and it came to pass that he was sent among the other servants to watch the flocks of Lamoni, according to the custom of Lamanites. And after he had been in the service of the king three days, as he was with the Lamentish servants going forth with their flocks to the place of water, which was called the waters of Sebus, and all the Lamanites drive their flocks hither that they may have water. Therefore, as Ammon and the servants of the king were driving forth their flocks to this place of water, behold, a certain number of the Lamanites, who had been with their flocks to water, stood and scattered the flocks of Ammon and they servants of the king, and they scattered them insomuch that they fled many ways. Oh, snap, they went to, uh, they scared off all the sheep. Now the servants of the king began to murmur, saying, Now the king will slay us as he has our brethren, because their flocks were scattered by the wickedness of these men. And they began to weep exceedingly, saying, Behold, our flocks are scattered already. Now they wept because of the fear of being slain. Now when Ammon saw that his heart was swollen within him with joy, for said he, I will show forth my power unto these my fellow servants, or the power which is in me in restoring these flocks unto the king that I may win the hearts of these my fellow servants, that I may lead them to believe in my words. And now these were the thoughts of Ammon when he saw the afflictions of those whom he termed to be his brethren. And it came to pass that he flattered them by his words, saying, My brethren, be of good cheer, and let us go in search of the flocks, and we will gather them together and bring them back unto the place of water. And thus we will preserve the flocks unto the king, and he will not slay us. Well, how do you go about, you know, rounding up all them 
scattered sheep, you gotta go in all directions. You gotta have some good sheep dogs, right? A lot of steady rope. And it came to pass that they went in search of the flocks, and they did follow Ammon. And they rushed forth with much swiftness, and did head the flocks of the king, and did gather them together again to the place of water. Oh, they headed them, so they went in front of them, and like, maybe took their their staff or whatever, and like, edged them off. Okay. And those men again stood, scattered their flocks. Oh no, what? They did it again? But Ammon said unto his brethren, and circle the flocks round about, that they flee not. Oh, surround them. And I go and I contend with these men who do scatter our flocks. To go and contend with people who scatter the flocks. Therefore they did as Ammon commanded them. And he went forth and stood to contend with those who stood by the waters of Sebus. And they were in number not a few. Also there was a lot. Therefore they did not fear Ammon. For they supposed that one of their men could slay him according to their pleasure. For they knew not the Lord had promised Mosiah that he would deliver his sons out of their hands. Neither did they know anything concerning the Lord. Therefore they delighted in the destruction of their brethren. And for this cause they stood to scatter the flocks of the king. But Ammon stood forth and began to cast stones at them with his sling. Yea, with mighty power he did sling stones amongst them. And thus he slew a certain number of them, insomuch that they began to be astonished at his power. Nevertheless, they were angry because of the slain of their brethren, and they were determined that he should fall. Therefore, seeing that they could not hit him with their stones, they came forth with clubs to slay him. Oh no! <laughs> they got clubs! Oh. But behold, every man that lifted his club to smite Ammon, he smote off their arms with his sword. Oh snap! For he did withstand their blows by the smiting their arms with the edge of his sword, insomuch they began to be astonished, and began to flee before him. Yea, and they were not few in number, and he caused them to flee by strength of his arm. Wow. Now six of them had fallen by the sling, but he slew none save it were their leader with his sword, and he smote off as many of their arms as were lifted against him, and they were not few. And when he had driven them afar off, he returned, and they watered their flocks, and returned them to the pasture of the king. And then went in unto the king, bearing the arms which had been smitten off by a sword of Ammon, of those who sought to slay him. And they were carried in unto the king for a testimony of the things which they had done. Wow. That was a pretty cool story. Wow. So Ammon was brave man he was think of, you know people getting killed over sheep you know wow well the mischievous got what they wanted right very cool